Hi everybody, thank you so much WCN for having me at Expo again this year. My name is Louisa, I'm from Mariset and I'm coming to you today from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'd like to speak to you today about a species of marine mammal that Mariset studies and works to protect. And it's a species that's very close to my heart, a species that many people would consider as uncharismatic yet I think is a species that deserves a lot more attention than it, than it currently receives. So today, I will speak mainly about the Indo-Pacific finless porpoises that we study here in Malaysia and some of the efforts that we do to protect them and other marine mammals that we work with. So the story begins here, back in 2010 in the Langkawi Archipelago, when my co-founder, Fyrol and myself, we're just trying to start our marine mammal um, career here in Malaysia. And we were told that in Langkawi, there are these pink dolphins that uh, occur and that are in need of studying. And so we thought, okay, let's try starting a project in Langkawi and see what we get. So when we first arrived in Langkawi in October 2010, we were expecting to see this uh, pink dolphin, the pink dolphin which is the Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin that we were told about. We were expecting to see them leaping and breaching and doing tail slaps and all the things that dolphins typically do. We were expecting to see a lot of these pink dolphins as well uh, throughout our 10-day survey. We were also told that there were sometimes Brutus whales that were seen around the archipelago. So we were very excited to keep our eyes peeled uh, for this species of whale, especially when seeing whales is something very uncommonly heard of in Malaysia. Instead, on the very first day of our very first survey ever in Langkawi, this is what we saw. Yeah. We saw Indo-Pacific finless porpoises, and this is what it typically looks like when they surface. And I remember that day very clearly. We were about 10 minutes into the start of our survey when suddenly 20 meters ahead of our bow, something dark pops up and disappears really quickly. And I thought, was that a sighting? Wait. So I, I got the skipper to stop. I said, I think I saw something, but it's gone now. Hang on. Was it a floating rubber tire? floating coconut, but that can't be because if it's something floating, it would bob up and down. Now there was nothing bobbing up and down in the same place. So we cut the engines and we waited for another 10 minutes or so. And finally, about a hundred meters away, that porpoise popped up again, just pop, pop, popped up and left. And I thought, oh, okay. So I guess I think what we just saw was an Indo-Pacific finless porpoise. And oh my, they're not easy to study. They're not easy to track. And actually for the next 10 days of our survey, we didn't see any of those pink dolphins we were told about. And we naturally also didn't see any whales. All we saw for the next 10 days were finless porpoises. And each time that we saw them, the encounter would last not more than 10 or 20 seconds. It was so frustrating. So what are finless porpoises? Finless porpoises are the small species of coastal cetaceans. They don't grow typically more than two meters in length. They are dark gray, almost a black color. And just as their name suggests, they do not have a dorsal fin like all dolphin species do. So in its place of where a dorsal fin would be on its back is what we call a tubercled ridge. It's this compressed flattened area on the back with these nubby little um, ridges and it has uh, a rounded head as you can see here and if you're lucky enough to catch a glimpse of uh, the porpoise actually surfacing uh, high enough out of the water you'd see that it actually looks quite adorable so unlike most other dolphins that have a beak or a rostrum the finless porpoise has a rounded head and it also um, has flattened spade-shaped teeth, unlike dolphins that have conical-shaped teeth. 
Fiddler's porpoises are found from the Persian Gulf all the way through South Asia, Southeast Asia and up towards um, Hong Kong, Taiwan and the southern parts of China. They occur in tropical shallow coastal habitats and you can see here in the magenta box uh, is where Malaysia is, where I am from. And in particular, we study the Indo-Pacific finless porpoises on the west coast of Peninsula Malaysia. So finless porpoises, Indo-Pacific finless porpoises are the only species of porpoise that occur in Malaysia as well as Southeast Asia. And actually, finless porpoises have appeared in the literature uh, way back to the 1900s and the 1800s as well, and slightly before. As you can see here in some examples I've shown you in these really old publications during colonial times, where um, finless porpoises were already mentioned in the literature. And back then, finless porpoises were known as the little Indian porpoise, as opposed to what they call the larger Indian porpoise, which is what we know today as Irrawaddy dolphins. Now you can see here how to the untrained eye, Irrawaddy dolphins and finless porpoises can be mistaken as being the same. Of course, one obvious difference physically is that Irrawaddy dolphins are larger uh, in size and they also have a dorsal fin, whereas finless porpoises lack that dorsal fin and are smaller in size. Um, they both have rounded heads, so that's why it's very easy to mistake them. And I think that these look-alike situations don't always uh, work in the porpoises' favour because they then don't stand out as having that identity of their own. But you can see that there are differences, including in the shape of their skulls. And of course, the mistaken identity crisis continues because we have found that people here often confuse and mistake finless porpoises as well for, as for dugongs. Um, dugongs are much larger, it is a large marine herbivore, but you can see here in these two side-by-side -side pictures that I've placed, on the left is actually the carcass of a finless porpoise that was found washed ashore sometime back in 2009, and on the right is a picture of a stranded dugong that we dealt with some years ago. And you can see the similarities uh, in appearance that might have led people to think that the finless porpoise on the left hand picture is actually a dugong when it is not. So this porpoise just does not seem to stand out and stick in people's minds like whales or dolphins would. And we want to try and change that. I'd like to show you a video uh, taken from a drone of finless porpoises that uh, we observe and study in Langkawi. Keep your eyes peeled, don't blink because you might miss something quite exciting in there. Um, so here we go. So you can see that uh, finless porpoises here, they're very unpredictable in their surfacing pattern. So that's why it is quite difficult to study them and that's one of the things that makes them kind of uncharismatic and not a favorite for um, researchers to want to study uh, because they just pop up anywhere and they're difficult to follow and in our field site the water can be quite turbid um, and coupled with the fact that they don't do much when they surface and they just show little bits of their back and sometimes their head if they're more active um, so but over the years we've learned how to count them when we see them we've learned how to observe their behaviors uh, and for me i personally learned to like them a lot um, and as i mentioned earlier on it has a special place in my heart next i want to show you a video of what finless porpoises look like on a good day when they're actively surfacing and when they're viewed from the boat so you can see here these porpoises were sort of popping out of the water a little more than they usually would and so we could see their faces and we could see their heads but really on a normal day all we see is their back in a split second and they're gone just like a floating rubber tire. So now coming back to the story of where it all began this is a map of the Langkawi archipelago on the northwestern uh, part of peninsula Malaysia so where we've been studying them since 2010 
What we've discovered over the years is that the finless porpoise is the most common species of marine mammal that occurs in the area. Uh, and they share the habitat very closely with Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins, uh, aka the pink dolphins that we first went out to find. You can see on the map here is the red star, and on the picture is the red star. That is the location that I mentioned just now about seeing the very first paupers on the very first day of our very first survey back in 2010. So that day is etched in my memory forever, even though it was such a fleeting moment of just seeing something pop up and disappearing. Um, I remember very clearly that moment and it's very special and it's grown more special to me over the years as we learned more and discovered more about these porpoises. And when we started designing a logo for this project, which is now Marisette's flagship project, uh, we decided to incorporate Finless Porpoise into it. I googled just to see how many logos out there have finless porpoises on it because obviously we know that there are many logos with whales and dolphins uh, and what I found is that there's really hardly any logos out there with finless porpoises so I really like our logo because it is very special and represents a species that is so often overlooked and we hope that this is in one way gives it some kind of presence and um, you know, raises its profile to other people. So just remember this background picture because I will come back to it later. Other things that we've learned about this species, uh, apart from them being the most common species around Langkawi and that they're found year round, is that we've learned how to detect them by looking out for squid ink. So what we've learned is that they actually like, uh, their diet consists a lot of cephalopods, which is octopus, cuttlefish, as well as squids. And often, before we see the porpoises surfacing, we actually see the squid ink in the water first. So you can see in the picture here, there's a part, a little part of the porpoise head that you can see, and it must have been just either chewing on a squid or chasing after one. You can see the squid ink just next to it. And in the background is this photograph of a squid hiding under its ink. Um, it survived another day, it didn't get eaten, but um, they're quite fun actually. So even though they're difficult to study, we've learned that squid ink is a good indicator of trying to um, detect the presence of porpoises in the water. We've also learned that in sharing their habitat very closely with humpback dolphins, finless porpoises are separated in some ways from fin um, humpback dolphins from competition in the same habitat by virtue of eating different things. So we found that, as I mentioned, finless porpoises like cephalopods, while we found that humpback dolphins prefer to eat fish. Now, even though finless porpoises are very common in our Langkawi, in, one, in this study side of ours, what we found is that all across Malaysia, um, and probably in the region as well, and in Langkawi, one of the biggest threats to finless porpoises is uh, accidental entanglement in fishing gear, in particular in gill nets, as you can see on the left, and um, in trawl nets, as you can see on the right. So you see these two carcasses that are bearing scars, um, which are telltale signs of having been entangled in either a gill net or a trawl net. So these are cause for concern, yet again, this species is often overlooked by so many people. But I think that one of the biggest threats to Finless porpoises is the fact that we are oblivious to, to them, that there isn't enough interest yet for this species. And we hope that through our work here at Marisat, we can change that because this species is one of our focus species. So we think that finless porpoises are more at risk than we realize or care to notice. Uh, you will see here a, a collection of photographs of finless porpoises that we have uh, on record uh, as having been found dead. Um, some even, as you can see the photo here on the left, uh, we don't know what happened to this porpoise. This was a photograph that we found on the internet, but it was a record from Langkawi. And you can see that it was a pregnant female and somehow perhaps in the stress of dying, it had um, expelled its uh, full term fetus. And that was very sad. So. When a whale and or dolphin strands, very often uh, it makes it into the news, it makes it into the media. 
and, and sometimes for days or, or an entire week. But very often when a Finless porpoise strands on the beach, it's either, either just left there, it's buried, it doesn't make it into the news, or if it does, as I mentioned earlier, it gets mistaken for something else. And people don't think twice about it. But what we're finding is that in our record of um, dead marine mammals that we have in our files, finless porpoises top the charts in that sense. There's a lot more records of finless porpoise uh, strandings and deaths that we have in our uh, records, in our database, than of other species such as Irrawaddy dolphins and humpback dolphins, which are the other two species that we study here. So th that's really a cause for concern, yet this is a species that we just don't think too much about because they're not very charismatic that way. Other threats include things like um, habitat degradation, habitat alteration. Um, earlier this year, uh, it was announced in the news that this large scale mega development project was going to take place here in Langkawi. Again, if you remember this picture from uh, a while ago that I just shared, this is where it all began for us. This is where we first saw our very first finless porpoise. Yet it's in this very site that this large scale development is about to take place. And we are trying to raise funds to do more work to be able to study how these porpoises and dolphins are using the area, to be able to use that data to support um, why such a project shouldn't happen because it will alter and it will impact the marine life as well as these marine mammals that live in the area. And this particular area of the island we know has hosts uh, pretty large groups of uh, porpoises. Uh, we've observed up to 30 to 35 animals in a group which is very large for this species because typically finless porpoises occur in groups of two to five. So this part of the island is definitely prime finless porpoise habitat and we want to try and gather more information about their detailed habitat use to try and stop um, any kind of disturbance, massive disturbance to their habitats. So earlier this year when we heard about this project we submitted some letters of concern to the media um, and it was published online where we highlighted how the area is so important for finless porpoises and other marine life. And through the work that we have done through the years, we managed to nominate and get uh, two of our project sites here in Peninsula Malaysia, which host finless porpoises as well as other species of cetaceans designated as important marine mammal areas. And we will continue to do the work that we do and to lobby for underground protection um, for, for, the, for these areas to be formally protected uh, by our own local laws. Other things that we try to do to elevate the profile of this elusive uh, species of marine mammal is to make merchandise that feature finless porpoises on it. Now there are not many merchandise out there that feature a finless porpoise and so we thought we would do it and these are stickers that our council member Joel designed based on some of the observations of finless porpoises that we have made over the years. I just love them. I have them uh, stuck on all my tumblers and my computer. Uh, we also do a lot of marine education and outreach work, um, especially pre-pandemic. We, we traveled to schools, we conducted public exhibitions to tell kids, to tell the public uh, about marine mammals, uh, that they exist here in Malaysia, what are the threats and why it is important to ensure their survival into the future. And we are hoping that next year when things start reopening up and returning to normal uh, post pandemic, we will be able to take this Whales on the Wheels marine education mobile truck on a nationwide tour, again to spread awareness about marine mammals, marine conservation and of course, finless porpoises. Uh, other things that we do to raise awareness with local communities include taking the local kids, for example, here in Langkawi, um, taking the local kids out to sea to search for dolphins and to search for porpoises. Because although many of them are born and raised 
are on the island. Many of them have never been to sea and have never seen these dolphins or porpoises. So we want to try and ignite a spirit of uh, empathy and awareness uh, within these kids and appreciation for this natural marine heritage that they have just in their backyard. We also train, do a lot of training workshops and capacity building for local communities in, in things like stranding response and how to sample for uh, marine mammal samples when it strands, what to do when a, a, a dolphin or a porpoise gets entangled in a net. We try to reach out to as many people in local communities that we can. Uh, and of course, a lot of the science that we do feeds into um, lobbying for policy and developments of national management plans for marine conservation. And since the pandemic, uh, and with all the restrictions on movements and being able to do in-person activities, we've had to pivot some of our work to be online. And one of the things that we have done um, is things like this virtual dolphin tour, where we, again, we still reach out to students, we still reach out to members of the public, but we take them on a virtual tour uh, and a mini laboratory session virtually. And we decided to try and reach more people as well um, through uh, with the work that we do by uh, starting our own blog this year. So we started Flukes for Thought by Mariset. Uh, we hope that if you have time and interest, do take a read at some of the articles where we share our own personal field experiences and link it to some of the major um, conservation topics that are uh, relevant in present times. And hopefully soon in the next few months when uh, travel restrictions lift locally, we hope to get back to Langkawi to help these kids in the village called the Clean Village Gang build a nature gazebo for their eco-learning activities uh, where we hope to conduct more outreach programs with them as well. And um, together with the support of uh, one of the WCN supporters, we've been able to get this gazebo designed and um, hopefully we'll start construction soon. So basically when, when working for conservation we have to figure out better ways to make other species more visible and make those emotional connections with people. How do we make people love a harlequin toad, red colobus monkey or tamarol? Or in this case finless porpoises. <clears throat> If you cannot tell an engaging story about these incredible animals and the threats they face, it is almost impossible to engage anyone. Each species on this planet tells us a story and we are their voices. And so I hope that I've been able to engage you with an interesting story about finless porpoises so that together we can gather more interest and raise the profile of this species that is in need of better conservation attention. So I hope that you've enjoyed the today's talk. Please continue to support us. This pandemic has not been easy on us, especially this year. And it is only with your support that we can continue doing the very important work that we need to do. So thank you so much for listening. Do support us and please follow us on our social media and you can reach out to us through any of these platforms. Thank you.